Chapter 31 In which Princess Kitty gets unexpected help. Three days later, on the outskirts near Moimo Harbor, the Tanaki are waiting for the Maybell to arrive, especially the engineer. But as the minutes of the early morning go by, and the indigo sky becoming brighter, they were anxious while keeping their eyes on the horizon for some sign of the lost trawler. Poor Takagamori Gonta was anxious the most of all, seeing that his gold pocket watch read 613. Oh hell, I don't think the boat is coming towards the harbor today, he said. I suggest we go home at once. The dawn is waking up, and so are the people. It's even creeping towards the dockyards, not to mention a warmer wind blowing after a night of cold. All be patient, especially you, Gonta, Mistress Kaku said. And I'm certain that your watch is always ten minutes slow. Wasn't difficult for you to purchase a new one. Might as well be ten hours instead of ten minutes. If only those two roughhousing twits didn't damage the clock tower. Always roughhousing. Even in the most important, give the Princess Kitty time. The Cat Queen has explicitly told us to wait for her. We've been told that the Princess is coming today with the Maybell and her crew. What's left of them, Shakuchi added. But we've been here outside the harbor for two hours, Bakuchi said. He was eating a Cadbury bar, and there was sticky chocolate on his fingers, and flecks of foil on his shirt. I say we take Gonta's saying. Yeah, Gonta said. At least one of them agrees with me. You quit griping, the engineer snapped. You and your rotten kind, the lot of you. The sooner we see Kitty, the sooner you and your sacred bollocks are out of here. Mistress Kaku whacked him on the head with a skillet, scolding. Silence! You may not live in the underground, but in our presence, you will show some respect. Am I clear to you, Bakeneko? You're better off starting a grease fire, he snapped, rubbing his head. Look over there, Pakachi, Gonta ordered. You see anything? Looking out with a cardboard tube, Pakachi said, I don't see anything. It's too far away. The engineer snatched the tube from him. And to think you can do magic. Can anyone help Pakachi, my friends? Mistress Kaku announces the others. Well, Takashi can do it, Daichi stepped forward. You know for a fact that I'm not supposed to be here, Takashi said. I'm supposed to be asleep, me and my strawberry tart. We'll be heading to the park later on for a proper affair. We haven't had one in four months. Daichi leaned closer and draws out his pistol. Well, I suggest you do it, unless you want me to come into your house later and make out to you and your wife. Takashi sighed in frustration, and he turned himself into a telescope for Pakachi to use. Just be careful with him, Mew said. I want my peach dropping undamaged, unhurt, uninjured. I demand my guitar, if you please, Shakuchi told Ganta. Giving Shakuchi his guitar, Ganta asked, What are you going to sing? Given that this story about this Princess Kitty shall be told when it's finished, either in book or on stage and on screen. It should be told in song. He made some adjustments and began to play, singing. We present the story of Princess Kitty, who first came here from a magical kingdom. She is destined to be welcomed here, for she is the one who brought us to existence. Well, what do you think? Shakachi asked Mistress Kaku after he stopped playing. I have a long way to go after all. Not bad, she said. What did you see? Gonta asked. Looking out with a telescope, Pakachi cried, there! I saw it! About a mile away! Then Princess Kitty prevailed, Mistress Kaku cried. 
I say another party to celebrate! Osho shouted. Enlightened, Shakuji played his guitar and singing again. Like a fiery phoenix reborn from the ashes, the lost fishing trawler known as the Maybell to Morimo Harbor. But Pakaji looks out again and said, Wait! I saw something at one of the rooftops! What is it? The engineer said. I see the Cat Queen! I don't understand. She's supposed to be at the hotel. Wait. She's looking at us. Maybe she wants to come here and congratulate- <laughs> But she is already here when he lowers the telescope, only to see him face to face. He screamed and jumps back, only to trip and land on his back, while he accidentally threw the telescope up in the air before it landed on the ground. Turning back into Takashi, while Daichi cackles madly. I think someone should tie a bell around you! Pakaji screamed. You fool! Miyu screamed. I told you to be careful! Oh hell, Gonta thought. What do you expect when she's the most feared? Nervous, Shakuchi went on. Came like an owl that prays through the forest. Here stands the queen, look upon her in fear, for she is the catalyst to the girl's existence. If you don't stop singing right now, you'll find your own guitar bash in your skull! Takashi screamed with one hand holding his forehead. Nobody wants to listen! NOBODY! Annoyed, the Cat Queen takes the guitar away from Shakuchi and smacked Takashi across the head with it, knocking him to the ground. Who cares, she said, as she thrust the guitar back into Shakuchi's hands. That was a very beautiful start of a song Shakuchi has sung. I mean, once he has started, he might be willing to finish it. No matter how long it will take, no matter how many obstacles he faced. I'm glad you like it, Queen, Shakuchi said. I'm willing to finish it after all. It seems that you're even more juvenile than usual, Queen, Mistress Kaku said. The Princess Kitty has come back with the Maybell, hasn't he? purred the Cat Queen. That is what's really important, Fireball. Yet... I had to bring her back here. Which means, she's not the only creature who's coming to the mainland. The Master of the Swans, Mistress Kaku asked. The Master of the Swans. He has fulfilled his purpose. Indeed he has, Mistress Kaku nodded in agreement. After all, we've heard the old song about him before. She turned to Shakuji. You know the words, right? Of course I do, he said. And sing you shall, Gonta said. Then Shakuchi rang out. The master of the swan shall sail and weather bad or fair. With his own ship from beak to tail go through the salty air. The master of the swans can speak, he cannot speak in tongues. But his two swans shan't make him bleak at the top of their own lungs. The great ship that the master's in is nothing like the others. In fact, his is a boat with skin and with white feathers that covers. The boat is actually a swan about eighty-two feet in height. Her feathers shall ruffle till the dawn, though her size could be a fright. She can help for those who need, for those who lost some hope. And the only way to succeed is to tie her with some rope. Then wonder of wonders, there she tow your ship back to dry land. It's the only last resort you know for those who take a stand. Will other people see the swan? That's something the master knows. 
pray that those who survive move on instead of ending up below. She's heading this way towards Morimo with the Maybell, Gonta said. What do we do now? Something tells me that the men aren't going to see that giant bird, purred the Cat Queen. We'll have the others alert the harbor, but don't expect a party to celebrate. Not in the hotel, anyway. You celebrate at the rooftops. The Tanaki cheer. Hooray! Celebrations at the rooftops! Just then, she had a thought, and stare at the damaged ship in the distance before she turned to Ryotaro. Say, she said, didn't you write that simple little book discussing every creature and what they do to mankind if anyone disrespects them, hmm? He slowly nods. He did wrote such a book. She bares her fangs and snarled. Time to pay a visit! No! The engineer called out, enraged. I won't let you go to mourn, my boss. I'm pretty sure loved ones, the press, everyone would be there. Some of the people thought their husbands had died. You have no sympathy towards these people. You said so yourself back at the hotel. You harassed these surviving seamen. It'll be as low as pissing on someone's grave. Don't worry, she said. I won't go. Then he seized up as if a knife stabbed her in the back. She lets out a long, sustained moan as her body shrank and her fur and ears melting away, becoming human like everyone in the city. However, that didn't wipe off her smirk. Miss Sunwa will, she sneered. He groaned and facepalmed. This isn't what I had in mind, boss. You can't go! However, this results in a human-disguised Ryutaro twisting his arm. Maybe your ears don't work so well, don't they? He orders Haruka and Minako. Take him! Both grinning maliciously, Haruka and Minako both grip the engineer by the arms tightly. The engineer's lips moved with careful precision, and his voice came in an odd cadence. Can't you say they suffered enough? And just be glad that they're back home alive? Even that princess you've been fascinated with? Charlotte snarled as she partially transformed. A princess got these sailors home safely. Only for a queen to punish them for their recklessness, he said. And what queen can be more inexorable than yours truly? He wanted to keep fighting, not to give up until she reconsidered about the decision. But it seemed so futile. That's because she made it futile. For she had all the power, the most unmerciful of the underground, and her partner had none. He could do nothing but frown as Haruka and Minako take him away as her face became normal. I meant every word that I've written in my book, Ryotaro said. Oh, it would be nice if you accompany me, she cooed. I suppose the cat goat princess might have read your book herself and know the facts, hasn't she? She could not help but know these creatures without pity. She must have. If not for her on board the ship, then everyone would have been lost at sea. They would never have learned the recklessness of their actions from the forces around them. One might express his lack of reverence to the unknown at the slightest incredulity. Now just because half of the crew are back on the mainland, all safe, doesn't mean they're off the hook too easily. Rest assured that the crew of the Maybell deserves to be chastised for their thoughtlessness by making sure none of the people in the harbor believe a word they say. Quite a fitting and ironic penalty for the crew, don't you say, Queen? And we shall let it swallow them. Charlotte spent no time thinking as she falls Rio Tar to the harbor while singing softly to herself. The cat 
came back the very next day. The cat came back, thought she were a goner, but the cat came back for she wouldn't stay away. While the tanuki ran off into the streets, Shaokuchi fall close behind while playing on his guitar and singing. So ends the chapter of the adventure at sea. Yet another chapter starts. For now, Cardono's not yet ready. For all the great things the princess is willing to do towards the city folk. It may take a while before we're all corporeal. Eventually our masks will be useless and we shall reveal to this world our true selves. Clearly this cat girl is the one. And I'm guessing you know what happens next. What is everyone going to hear? The Tanaki celebrate on the rooftops, while Ryotaro the Kitsune, Mistress Kakyu, Gonta, and the most social of the Tanaki stayed in the Hotel Valerian with the Cat Queen and the Engineer, probably focused on listening to the news. She had her violin to play with. They were aware that the clock tower wasn't working when Princess Kitty returned. That's because Kumataro and Tomasa Bureau's mindless roughhousing had damaged the clock's mechanism, but she fixed it with her magic, as we all know. But a few days later, that little incident with the clock tower isn't the only one they were aware of. Just to give you an idea of the situation which seems to be getting stranger with each passing minute, Phineas Child's voice blares out from the radio. At the moment, we have clothes, wet, and floating over Mulberry Street, going through both Main Street and up to Market Square after almost 40 minutes. Although some people are not injured, they happen to be drenched in soap and water. Locals alert this to both the mayor and the city council. Despite this, the mayor, we've been told, is virtually unavailable for questioning. Unavailable for questioning, Ryotaro said. At least the Tanaki folk aren't involved. They've always pride themselves on seeing things the way they truly are, Gonta sighed. That's the problem with all mankind this day and age. They knew when to stop believing in the unknown and keep their feet on the ground. When the Cat Queen heard the broadcast, she said, Something tells me that it was the Princess Kitty's doing. There shall be more of this. Reports upon reports upon reports. Well, whatever's the case, I feel bad for the people who had soap in the eyes, the engineer said. More's the pity, darling. These fools had it coming when it comes to interfering. That is a sardonic way to say, Cat Queen, Mistress Kaiku said. I must admit. Then Clayton Wilbury announced on the radio. In other news, a parade is expected to be held in Main Street this Tuesday. That made the Cat Queen pick up the radio and press her ears at the speaker. Do you mind? The engineer snapped. Mistress Kaiku said, Clearly, there's no real reason you would do that. Everybody. Tuesday, he said, the Cat Queen asked. I fear that's going to be really exciting to the people in their city, Fireball. So ordinary, with their marching bands and their performers. Pretty much, Gonta said. Are you saying that we should attend like everybody else while blending in? Darling. Why should we go see a common parade? She asked. I prefer a parade that's done in a more unexplained and unrealistic-like way. What are you talking about, ma'am? Hayashi asked. Please tell us, Sasuke said. 
It would be nice if Mistress Kaku and Ryutaro can summon all the Tanaki to come back here, purred the Cat Queen, putting down the radio. It shall be done, Mistress Kaku said. We'll be back with the rest of the Tanaki. And if we do, I do hope you have a clear explanation as to why. As soon as Mistress Kaku and Ryutaro left the suite, the Cat Queen can feel her claws protruding. Of course, this was the matter of the mere presence of the One. We shall live in Kadono long enough to see the girl be welcomed here and accepted, she snarled. Figures, Gonta said. I knew what happened on Tuesday had something to do with this girl. If that was an obsession... Obsession, purred the Cat Queen and thrust her claws to his face. These claws... Every day she lingers, it will become less and less possible to retract them. The same goes to my face. She then has the fur on her head and the ears molt away, becoming human. Gonta dared his best not to look away when he saw the cat eyes still remain, as well as the sides of her mouth. Now, every time I try blending in, when the girl still lingers here, my mask is already beginning to show cracks. She lets herself transform back. Is that what shall become of us? Gonta thought. Will it become impossible for us to blend into humanity? It can be delayed for a month, a year, but the inevitable shall come to us, she said. Not even our masks will hold it back. Pretty soon, all the Tanaki has been accounted for in the hotel room. Why did you summon us here? Pakachi asked. Is there a problem? Shakuji asked. We'd be happy to help out in any way we can. If you haven't heard while you party like a bunch of ragamuffins, a parade is coming on Tuesday, purred the Cat Queen. Tuesday? the Tanaki cried. A parade! Koharu said. With balloons and everything? The whole tempura, ladies, Gonta said. The females coo at the cat queen, saying, We love a parade. Can we go? We love to go. Can we? She pushed them away and walked to the radio. Do you all wish to attend the parade on Tuesday? I wouldn't keep your hopes up if I were you, you and your tanaki folk. If something goes wrong... I would expect the Princess Key to improvise like she did before, and to think I was the unpredictable one. You know the way I see it. It would involve the Tanaki Queen, Ryutaro said. If it would, what should we do tomorrow? Bunta asked. Interfere again? Prevent the parade from beginning? Precisely, purred the Cat Queen. I'm sure she'll think of something. How I've longed for the antics of you Tanaki folk have made. And on Tuesday, as a reward, you can go see it. Very well, Queen, Bunta said. It shall be done. Everything we should do, we do it for Kitty. That's when Gonta realized that there's something unaccounted for. Fireball, are you sure that every Tanaki is accounted for? He asked. Well... All but three, Gonta, Mistress Kaku said. They were in a group. Oh, hell, those three. Really, I'm not that surprised if Daichi, Takashi, and Miyu didn't show up at all. Surely those three might have gotten into trouble by now. Like what? What kind of trouble? Like causing a traffic accident? Or start a factory fire? I never care less if they do. But the Queen simply said... All the Tanaki Fireball. If they do get here, I don't think she'll ever repeat the news for them. Just then, the door burst open, and there came Daichi, his head lolled forward, and his hand grasping the frame. Breathless, he hobbled aside, allowing Takashi and Miyu to pass. All three of them were drenched to the bones. Well, now that you're here, we're just talking about the three of you. Gonta said. 
You do realize that the Queen does not tolerate for those who are not on time. Well, sorry if we didn't come sooner, Gonta! Takashi snapped. It wasn't our fault we're late and what? Then do tell, Gonta said. What is it that makes you three delayed this time? Just give us time, will ya? Daichi said. We ain't in the mood. How does two seconds sound? Gonta snorted. What happened to the three of you? Mistress Kaku asked. We met this princess girl while we were driving in the streets, Miu said. Upon hearing, the Cat Queen approached them. You did, darling? she asked. If you three have, what great things she had done next after she fixed the clock tower and made clothes fly? Takashi spoke up. She almost crashed into us. Yeah, Daichi said. We barely got out of the way. I was at the wheel, and before we know it, wham! Pretty sure Kadona wouldn't mind if there's a huge fountain suddenly appeared in the streets. Your answer is not good enough for me, the Cat Queen demanded. What happened to you and the other two? I think there's been a bank robbery, and this girl wanted to stop the criminals by driving a police car, Miu said. And I thought I was the one who made bad choices, Daichi said. Which you still do, darling, put the Cat Queen. The girl's stopping a couple of thieves instead of the proper authorities. Suppose crime really doesn't pay. The same can't be said about our car, Daichi said. I have no time listening to any of your personal problems, for which they don't interest me, purred the Cat Queen. What she had done in the streets is yet another great thing to Kadono. And what does that prove? Miu asked. That the city should demand her existence and welcome her, purred the Cat Queen. It is already considered fate. Her destiny, you mean, boss, the engineer said. So now that you know what happened, do you mind telling us what we should do tomorrow? Takashi asked. You three happen to show up late, darling, purred the Cat Queen, turning away. You figure it out. Hopefully that teaches the three of you how important it is to be on time. When I say all the Tanaki, I mean all of them. Pardon me, Miss Snooty Cat, Daichi snapped, tired. And clean yourselves up, the Cat Queen barked. You three are dripping all over. Then they leave the suite, with Takashi muttering to himself, Man Puku Temple, this place isn't. Easier said than done, the Tanaki had done it on Monday. Then on Tuesday, the Tanaki can't even wait to see what Princess Kitty has done to improvise. But the engineer is unamused. Darling, you remember the motives, purred the Cat Queen. They have a jovial nature and delight in playing tricks on humans. And to think we have so much in common. I never knew they would be reckless cooks. I'm thinking the salmon fillet would agree. Surely the Princess Kitty would improvise by then. So when will the parade start? Koharu asked. Won't be long now. Gonta said. Then he laughed. I can easily imagine a huge group of people at Main Street, huge enough for us to blend in like salt in water. Quite right, Mistress Kaku said. If her parade is here, then we will go. She asked the Cat Queen. Has she improvised? Only one way to find out, the Cat Queen said. She turned on the radio and they can hear the voice of Phineas Trout. And here it comes, the moment of truth when the parade finally starts. Right now, here on the sidewalks, people are expecting entertainers, performers, and a marching band. Hold on a minute. I think I saw two cats riding bicycles. Yes, that must be it. They appear to have long hind legs that reach the pedals. All right, I see the people stunned at this. Cats riding bicycles, 
Mistress Kaku asked. That is unusual, isn't it? Pokachi asked. Gentlemen and gentlemen mostly, Phineas Trout continued. I never thought I would see this. The crowd was astonished with the sight of cats dressed in their fashionable clothes as they stride through the streets on their hind legs. I knew she would improvise, the Cat Queen smiled sickly, but she suddenly snarled. But the children might also attend too! Why are you concerned about the children? Hanako asked. They're not supposed to see her, the Cat Queen snarled. Her voice dripped vitriol from her fangs. We can go the parade, but I would like you to do one thing. Me and my engineer wanted to be alone. The Tanaki cheered. Hooray, we can go! Enlightened, Shaokichi steps forward and plays his guitar, singing. The cat girl princess has done it again. This time she brings forth a cat parade for the people who come to witness it. They shall be left amazed. That was wishful thinking, boss, the engineer calls out. All show taunted. Aw, it's as if you and your boss are made for each other. Then the females laugh. How about I wring your neck like a dish rag? The engineer snapped. Darling, I want you to lose that eye patch, purred the cat queen, and that mustache. Absolutely not, the engineer shouted. You can't take away me patch. I've had it for years. We don't want the children to see us this way. This will surely not- I'm not going to lose me patch! Do you want the children to suspect us? She hissed, her eyes narrowing at him. She sounds angry underneath that grin. You would, but not me! He said. Fine, she said. Let someone else help. Gladly! Osho shrieked and snatched the patch from the engineer's head. The old man screamed and covers his left eye. His right eye burns with hatred towards Osho and the precious patch in his hands. Come and get it, one-eyed grandpa! Osho cackles. The engineer reaches for the patch, but the Tanaki gets it out of his reach, while the females laugh at his further plethora. What's the matter? Osho taunted. You're gonna die without it? You're the one who's going to die! The engineer roared. Then you'll never see women's bras again! Oh, I'm so scared! Osho taunted. Not as scared as you are. The Cat Queen grasped the engineer's right arm, but he budges. You think you're afraid people are going to see what's become of that left eye, darling? She asked, as the female Tanaki laughed. You think this is funny? He bellowed. It is to me, she said. Now come with me. We got ourselves a parade to spectate. You don't listen, do you? You might as well cut off your ears and throw them in the bin for as long as you use them. I will not have you speaking to the queen this way while I'm present. Ryotaro's voice was cold. So what, Fox? The engineer ranted. The only reason you and the others want to help that princess is because you and the others had the audacity to be known yourselves. And I don't want to be a part of it. You call this helping? That was sabotage. You think you got a problem with this? After I looked at that wolf in the eye and told her, purred the cat queen. If you know you had a brain, you'd realize how disrespectful it is. I want to level with you. Sabotage is not what we've done. Interference is what we've done. There is a massive difference. About as massive as the tuft of fur on my chest, making it appear like I had a huge balsam. And right now, you're not doing yourself any good at taking this attitude. Oh yeah? Then what kind of interference you and your friends are going to do next? Start a power outage at the plant? 
cause a flood or an epidemic? She and her friends just stared at him. Am I supposed to be scared by you people? He asked. Still, they kept staring at him. What are you going to do? He rants, impatient. Throw me out the bleating window? She cackles and said, Oh, no, no, no. I won't throw you out the... No. You think that, darling? Isn't that right, Ryutaro? Just then, Ryutaro sees the engineer. His movement was cat-like in its sudden fluidity. Very stupid choice of words, he whispered. You let me go! The engineer ordered. It did happen to you before, hasn't it? Isn't that funny? Guess it's my turn to be Frankenstein. With inhuman strength, Ryutar hurls the engineer out the window. On the way down, the engineer screeched like a loud parrot before landing face first through the vinyl roof of a parked car. The females laugh at his misfortune, and Asho throws the patch out, shouting, Shove this up your poopy hole! Even Daichi, Takashi, and Miyu looked down in pity. However, it didn't last long when Daichi said, Did he actually say something about us causing a flood? That does take me back. And by back, you mean years ago! Takashi said. Does have a point, Miyu said. I do remember the last typhoon in Kyoto before coming here. Hey, that one wasn't entirely my fault, Daichi said. The Arashi birds started first. It wasn't my fault they migrated there from the Caroline Islands after insulting them back. Oh, really? Takashi asked. How about that explosion from our cargo ship carrying explosives in Otaru? Or the mining explosion in Fukuchi? Or the avalanche in Michumata? And don't get me started on that great earthquake in Kanto Plains, in which 140,000 perished. Hey, Daichi shouted. This is going a teeny weeny itsy bitsy bit too far, don't you think? What happened in 1923, I'll tell you. If there's any truth, let's not forget, we're the ones who caused trouble to those stormfish, like the ones that damaged that ship. Things get blown out of proportion, the stormfish are angry, a lot of buildings crumble, a huge wave overwhelmed them, everybody got hurt. We're the ones to blame, D, T, and M. Scowling at the conversation, Ryutaro turned away and faced the cat queen. If I did throw him out the window, it wouldn't be funny, she said. Be proud that I'm doing you a favor, queen, he said. I'm coming with you. We depend on Kitty, do we? Look, after hearing so much news on her, I'd rather support her myself. Very wise decision. As for your partner, while he's in the car, he better reflect for just a bit on who has authority. A bitter quality the Cat Queen knew well crept into the Kitsune's voice. I hope those cats at the parade are doing all sorts of fun stuff, she said. Chances are, we'll be joining them too. The reign of the Princess Kitty is due. I'm pretty sure you know that story already. Ryutaro joined the Cat Queen in his great clothes as a human. She already had her disguise. One Charlotte Lenoir. Aside from the Kitsune, who made the children get stung by Kenbosho if they recognized Princess Kitty, but not Mr. Pratchett, it was she who humiliated Constance Malchance by having Haruka and Minako douse her in chocolate and cover her in feathers. It was she who learned that if Constance ever comes to the police, or even lose her temper, she'll end up in a cell for the whole summer. Surely the Cat Queen shall use that against that devil woman. After the parade, the Tanaki went back to the Valerian, where they throw another rowdy party. But instead of her suite, they celebrate on the rooftop. 
When night came, they went their separate ways, back to making a living in Kodono. Later in the day, Hayashi and Sasuke left Kodono en route to Kanagawa Prefecture by car. They'll be expecting to return in two months. As for Ryutaro, he went back home to his recluse in the woods, where he can please his mistress. However, it won't be long before unwanted interference occurs against Princess Kitty. <laughs>